All right. We're at uh, It Is Well With My Soul, 145. he gets ready to sing and uh, be sure to share this message with everybody around the world we've had 400 and some odd people already look at the memorial service and, uh, and every one of them said they got a blessing out of it My father wrote this uh, part of this song, the first verse and, and um, chorus, in 1991 before he passed away. Amen. And I received it from a friend of mine that knew him, and uh, he sent it to me years ago, and I pulled it out of my files the other day, or about four weeks ago, and Suze wrote the last two verses and the ending. Mm just four weeks ago before she passed away wow. Wow. and the name of the song was changed from on the treadmill to oblivion to a hope a home in eternity and that was done by our daughter Lou who came up with that title so this song has truly been a family affair mm -hmm. I'd like to do it for you now Time you reach senility, you've covered lots of ground. There aren't many people left with whom you hung around. 
Some of them have moved away to find a warmer climb, and others have just passed away when their life ran out of time. On the treadmill to oblivion, there is no aim or goal, no sign of destination to soothe the weary soul. On the treadmill to oblivion, you must keep up the pace. The moment that you falter, someone else will take your place. The time has come to make a choice before you pass away into your oblivion that Jesus is the way to make the decision to obtain eternal life by inviting him into your heart getting rid of all the strife on the treadmill to oblivion there is no aim or goal no sign of destination to soothe the weary soul on the treadmill to oblivion you must keep up the pace the moment that you falter someone else will take your place so bend your knee to jesus and invite him in your life so when you fall from the earthly treadmill your obituary will read that you moved on to heaven with a climate that's controlled where there's no more strife or sorrow and no more growing old the time has come to make a choice before you pass away into your oblivion that Jesus is the way. The time has come to make a choice before you pass away into your oblivion that Jesus is the way. Now the time has come to make a choice that Jesus If you have your Bibles, we need to turn to Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to take the first 15 verses tonight for the message of the book of Galatians. And uh, this is a book that was written to explain that grace alone is what saves. Amen. Nothing else. You can't add to it because the Judaizers the ones who believe that you needed to trust Jesus as your Savior, but you also need to keep the Jewish law, had uh, come to Galatia, and they were teaching the people there that uh, that was what they ought to do. And Paul said, no, uh, salvation is by grace alone, through faith in Jesus Christ alone, and you can't add to it or take away from it. Right. And in this portion of Scripture, he's talking about uh, being saved by grace uh, again because he uh, wanted to, to uh, give them the assurance that salvation was by the grace of God alone. And I want to read about five of these verses to start with. He said, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It was just plain what he was saying. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. I'm going to stop right there and talk about this a while. There's some very important verses here uh, for the Christian to uh, take into consideration. Number one uh, is, is just verse number one. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, 
and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So actually, he was t uh, just being uh, uh, straightforward with them, and he said, since you've been saved by the grace of God, and uh, you're going to heaven, uh, don't go back to what you used to have that couldn't have taken you to heaven in any way, shape, or form. That the blood of Jesus Christ and all is all that cleanses from sin. And he said, I want you to stand fast to the liberty uh, wh wh where you are right now. And, and he said, uh, the law is not the rule of faith for the believer. It, it never has been and never will be. The law was just a schoolmaster uh, to show us our need of a Savior. And we could never live by the law and expect to go to heaven. He said something else that's really important there. He said, even to put on the badge of the law, I said, which is circumcision. When he talks about the circumcision here, behold, I say unto you, he said in verse number two, that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. What he said there was really, uh, it didn't have anything to do with circumcision. It says it meant the law. You could just put law right there. Of course, that's what he said. If you're going to go back to Judaism, well, then the salvation by grace is of none effect. In other words, you can't lose your salvation after you get it, but you have made it of none effect because you've tried to go back and tried to keep the law of, of uh, Moses, and you can't do it. Law and grace do not mix. No way in shape or form. That's why we've had so much trouble over the years with people saying, I can't live the Christian life because they're trying to do works that would prove to them that they're good in the sight of God. I mean, it's not what we do, but it's who we are. It's, and really, it's who we know. If you know Jesus Christ in the free pardon of your sin, you're in good shape. That's all there are to it. And there's no use in going back and trying to live by the law. You can't keep it. And so Galatians 5.3 is really a good one. He said, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, or that is trying to live by the law, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Remember that one? That's one where he said, if you're guilty of one part of the law, you're guilty of all of it. Yeah. So he's just restating that for him right here. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is debtor to do the whole law. So if you tell a lie, it's a, you're guilty of all of the Ten Commandments. You know, because you, you're guilty of one. If you don't honor your mom and daddy, if you don't, uh, then you're guilty of all of them. And if you steal something, you're guilty of all of them. And so what we need to realize is that we will, he's trying to say here, no one can be saved by trying to keep the law. And he tries to make it as plain as possible. And then in, in this, uh, I said James gave the negative side to that. When he said in James 2.10, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Yeah. So then we saw the next verse is very important too. Galatians 5.4 Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Now there's a certain segment of people that really they don't understand the context here and they think that if you don't live right for instance uh, you're going to lose your salvation you're going to fall from grace but uh, i'll tell you what i, I said i, I said uh, here's what i said about it falling from grace does not mean to fall out of salvation or lose it you never you know what you can fall on the rock but you'll never fall off the rock and Jesus Christ is the rock. And so don't ever think of that. But here you fall from grace. In other words, you are way up here on this level. And any time you're going to depend on anything else but grace, you're going down, 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 down. You know? And so you don't want to go down and take a lesser course. You want to get the best, which is grace. 
And I put it this way. I said, it means to try to be saved by some other means. It means you fall from the high plane of grace down to the low level of legality. I said, it means to be saved by grace and tr to try to live the Christian life by law. Uh, is, and that means you can fall from grace. That's what that's talking about. You're never going to lose your salvation. But you can fall out. You, you know, you could say if you wanted to, fall out of grace. That means you're, you're out of the will of God. You're not doing what God would have you to do. You're still saved by the grace of God. Um, and then the fifth verse, uh, For we through the Spirit wait for the righteousness by Christ. Uh, hope of righteousness is the only prophetic reference in this entire uh, entire epistle. And it, it, we do wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. We're looking forward to the time when we can come uh, to know Christ in the personal sense as we walk with Him on streets of gold. Let me go back to this falling from grace deal. Uh, once you're saved, you're always saved. Amen. But I know people that have gone into the Jehovah's Witness yeah. and they've gone into the Mormon church because they thought, boy, this is a cl these people are clean living, you know. They don't even drink coffee. They don't smoke cigarettes. They don't drink beer. They don't drink Coca-Cola. <laughs> they do drink Pepsi because they have no own Pepsi-Cola company. But uh, the point is, uh, they're still saved. Yeah. You can even be converted to the Catholic Church and say, I, 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 become, I was a Baptist, but now I'm Catholic. You're still saved. Right. I don't care what you do. You're still saved. Right. You're out of the will of God, but you're still saved when you go in, especially those cults. A lot of people love to go into a church that is a structured uh, doctrine, you know, where they tell you how to live and how to walk and everything. And it's not easy to just live free, you know, in Christ. Because then you've got to be responsible for your own self. And, it, and that's why whenever the communists, you know, they got freedom over there in Russia. The Soviet Union was broken up. But the people in Russia, they wanted to go back to communism because all of their lives, they had gotten their $20 a month in a, a little old apartment with 50 people in it. And they thought, well, at least I didn't have to get out here and work and rustle up money to buy food with. And so they wanted to go back. You remember the Jews when they were out in the wilderness? They said, man, you brought us out here to starve us to death. We want to go back. At least we had onions and garlic and stuff like that to eat down there in, in, uh, in, the, in Egypt. And here we have nothing. They had that manna. They ate so much manna, they were sick of it. And he finally sent them some quail. And they were sick of quail. And, and they were just grappers. There's no doubt about it. I will read a few more verses. I'll start with verse number 6 now. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So the main thing he said I want you all to realize is whether you uh, try to keep the law or whether you don't try to keep the law, that has nothing to do with salvation. Salvation is by grace through faith in Christ alone. I mean, can't, we have to understand that. People need to understand that. It's not through baptism. It's not through church membership. It's not through good works. It's not giving offerings. It's not giving alms to the poor. It's faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone. That's what salvation is. Now, here's a really a good verse, number 7. You ought to put a star by those. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? You know, sometimes we forget that it's not what hinders us, it's who hinders us. Just about every time somebody goes astray, they've been dealt with or talked to by somebody that has talked them into it. Let's try a, a marijuana cigarette. Let's try beer. Let's try sex. And, and you say, well, I would never do that. But they talk you into it. So he said... When these Judea, he knew what the answer was. He knew that these people didn't come up come up with this on their own. They were when he left there, they were believing God. They had faith in Jesus Christ. 
their lives were on the level with the Lord and then these Judaizers came in and said what you're doing is wonderful but you need to go just a little bit further and consequently that's what a lot of churches do today when a good old Baptist gets a, a, a sinner gets saved in a Baptist church and he has friends in these other churches they say well boy you did real good but you need just to go a little bit further some of them said you need to be baptized to really be saved. Some of them said you need to get the second blessing. Some of them said you need to talk in tongues to evidence of your salvation. And stuff like that. You don't need a bit of that. That The Bible flatly tells you that salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Whether you're circumcised or you're not circumcised, that, makes a, that doesn't make a dime's worth of difference. It's whether you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior or not. You know him. So remember that. Who, who, you did run well. Now who hindered you? Who? Who? Not what? Who? Somebody's involved. Verse 8. The persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Verse 8. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Said the Lord didn't give you that. The Lord didn't give you that. And then nine's a big one. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Woo! Did you know when somebody gets messed up, the first thing that people get messed up about is the Bible. If you say, I really don't believe the Bible is the Word of God. I just think it's a real good book and it contains some great stuff. You know what will happen to that? You begin to slip on other things that you believe. You then say, well, there's not much use going to church. There's not much use tithing. Not much use witnessing anybody. Not much use even praying anymore. But the first thing you know, did you know that happens to people every every year? You know, people will say, they'll be on fire for the Lord. Everything's going really great. And then you'll see them quit coming to Sunday school maybe. Quit coming to Wednesday night first probably. Quit coming to Sunday night. And then finally, one of these days, you look up and they're gone from Sunday school. And you say, what happened? What happened? They just gradually got out of God's plan and God's will for their life. And what a tragedy that is. And so he said, you didn't get that from the Lord. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Remember, if we have a little leaven, uh, you know, uh, it leaveneth the whole batch. So in plain English, that means false teaching, especially in the area of salvation, leads to areas, errors in other areas. When you uh, begin to talk about, uh, uh, make errors about salvation, the first thing you know, you're having areas, I got, can't get this thing, errors in other areas. So be careful, because it's so easy. And then uh, verse number 10, let's look at that. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would that they were even cut off which troubled you. Boy, that's... That's something in verse 10. Paul believed that the Galatians would ultimately reject the teaching. He said, I really believe that you will ultimately, that you will reject the teachings of these Judaizers. And then he said in verse 11, he said, you know, if you preach something besides Jesus Christ as, the, as, as, the, uh, as salvation, for salvation, uh, then you've made the cross of Christ of none effect. See, let me read that to you so you can really see it. That's Galatians 5.11. He said, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. In other words, if you're not going to say, if he said, if I'm not preaching that Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation, well, then uh, the, the offense of the cross uh, has uh, ceased. But every one of us know, and I'm going to try to get there and, and, and read it to you. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 8. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 8. I'm going to read it to you. 
And you, you know what it says yourself probably before I get there. First Peter chapter 2, and I'm getting there, verse 8. Here's what it says. He says, And a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto they were appointed. That's absolutely not right. Uh, so uh, I wanted a, uh, I wanted that stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. But uh, you, uh, at least you'll know. Uh, maybe it's Second Peter. I'm gonna go over there real quick. Second Peter, and uh, I, I wrote that down. Uh, well, no, I can't. I can't find it. Somebody can look that up. But it's, uh, it's uh, the, It says he's, he's a, a stumbling block and a rock of offense uh, to anybody that does not accept him as their savior. Look at verse twelve. I would that they were even cut off that troubled you. Paul presents three methods for trying to live the Christian life, of which two will not work. One of them is a life of liberty. That's the one that works. The other one is a life of legalism. And the third one is a life of license. You know, people say, well, if you believe once saved, always saved, that just gives people a license to sin. Uh, you know what? Every time that anybody has ever gotten a license, it gave them uh, a, the right to do something. Not sin or not... Say you get a fishing license... What are you going to do with that? you got to go fishing. You get a marriage license and then you get, you're married. If you get a driver's license, then you can drive. If you get a, 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 a Christian license, so to speak, then you can live for Christ. Amen. It doesn't go the opposite way. It's not a license to not do what the license is for. Amen. The license is for you to live for Christ. So remember that. And then verse 13, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Woo! You know, a lot of times people say, well, since I'm saved by the grace of God, and I'm, I live in the liberty that Christ has given me, I can just live like the devil and everything will be all right. And that's what a lot of people think. They can't stand the fact that there's a bunch of Christians that are living like the devil. And they say, what's the use of me going to church with a bunch of people that are claiming they're saved, but they live like the devil? And we need to quit living like the devil. We need to live for Christ. We need to let our light shine so that people, when they look at us, they'll see Jesus instead of the devil's crowd and the things of the devil verse 14 now this is where I said that this brings the, the law down to its lowest common denominator uh, for all the law is fulfilled in one word even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself that's it that's not one word is it <laughs> but anyway one phrase Love. We just underline love. Love. Love is the thing that uh, covers a multitude of sins, by the way. And uh, love your neighbor. You know, we're the only, uh, Christianity is the only, I'm, I started to say religion, but we're not a religion. It's the only faith that tells you to love God, to love yourself, and to love your neighbor, and to love your enemies. Woo! Nobody else wants to do that. But Christians do, and we do it happily. We do it happily. It doesn't mean that we have to run with our enemies, but we do love them. This is the acid test of those who think they are living by the law. Now here it is. It's right in the Bible. Galatians 5.15 But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. You know, before you ever start a fight, you need to make sure that you're willing to destroy your home. Mm -hmm. You're willing to destroy your workplace. Are you willing to destroy the church? You got to be careful before you get, because if we bite and devour one another, we've only got one place to go, and that's into oblivion. Mm -hmm. so we better stick together, haven't we? Let's pray.